It's time for the verdict. The verdict is a lively discussion of current events and legal issues pertinent to Oklahomans. The verdict is hosted by Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. The verdict is sponsored in part by the Able Law Firm. It's time for the verdict. And welcome once again to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett, and I am joined, as always, by one of Oklahoma's top legal experts, Kent Myers. And Kent, today, a couple of special guests. Special guests and a special topic. Uh, it's uh, going to be a, a, a bit of a lively discussion, I think. And we're going to be talking about something called the Patriot Act. Now, how we would be able to find anybody who would be against an act that was titled <laughs> the Patriot Act, I'm not quite sure. But we have. We have today uh, Robert McCampbell, the uh, United States Attorney for the Western District of Oklahoma, who uh, is in part in charge of enforcing uh, the, some provisions of the Patriot Act. And we have John Coyle, a, a many-time visitor on the verdict, uh, who is a, an Oklahoma criminal defense lawyer that is, uh, has some problems with some of the provisions. Uh, our guests will discuss how the Patriot Act was uh, uh, promulgated, uh, what kind of enforcement there's been of it since it was enacted shortly after 9-11, and whether or not it's doing what it's intended to do or is it doing too much. Should be lively. This morning, two of our more popular guests return to The Verdict. Robert McCampbell, John Coyle, next on The Verdict. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. The Able Law Firm, based in Oklahoma City and recognized nationally for its superior legal ability and very high ethical standards. If you've been injured or believe someone you love has been a victim and needs to talk to an attorney, call The Able Law Firm. Initial consultations are free. The Able Law Firm. In Oklahoma City, the number is Sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children has over 500 of the best attorneys and volunteers who donate their time and service to represent children in Oklahoma County. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers is going to introduce our guests. Very pleased today to have two guests, both making return visits. Uh, uh, across the table from me is Robert McCampbell, the United States Attorney for the Western District of Oklahoma. Uh, Robert is a, Yale, or is a Yale Law School graduate, but is a Vanderbilt undergraduate uh, uh, representative of that school. He uh, was also elected to Phi Beta Kappa when he uh, graduated from Vanderbilt. He's an Oklahoma City uh, native. Uh, he has been in private practice for a number of years prior to becoming a United States attorney. Two years ago, he was nominated by George Bush uh, to be the United States attorney for the Western District. Uh, Robert has been serving since that time after being confirmed by the Senate. He's active also in juvenile justice matters. He's married to Donna and has uh, two children, Anne and Ben. And uh, welcome, Robert, and welcome, Donna and Anne and Ben, to the verdict. Glad to have you back. Thank you for having me, Ken. Uh, to my right is a longtime personal friend of mine, uh, John Coyle. John is making his sixth appearance on the verdict. And uh, for our viewers that go back 
far enough. John was on our very first verdict show, uh, and we uh, are pleased to have him back. He's a 28-year uh, lawyer in Oklahoma uh, City and in Oklahoma County, uh, specializing in criminal defense, uh, does also some civil practice. He uh, got his BA and JD degrees from Oklahoma City University. He's been consistently selected in Best Lawyers in America for criminal defense uh, matters. Uh, he was named in the past Oklahoma's outstanding criminal defense lawyer and making his uh, sixth appearance with us. Uh, John, we're so pleased you'd give us the time to come back. Well, thank you very much. I'm you've glad kept, to be back. You've kept the show going. It's enjoyable. We're glad to have you. Today, uh, gentlemen, we want you to talk about the Patriot Act and the pluses and minuses, if any, of that legislation. Uh, I'd like to start uh, with Robert and ask uh, if you would give us a very brief overview of what brought about the Patriot Act and what does it do. Sure. <clears throat> After September 11, in the weeks following that event, Congress struggled and debated with an appropriate legislative response. And about six weeks later, they passed the Patriot Act. And the Patriot Act does three things in general. One thing it does is it creates new crimes. Uh, attacking a mass transit system is now a federal crime. Using a biological toxin as a weapon is now a federal crime. Attacking a national security computer is now a federal crime. And it's a shame we need to worry about those things, but in today's world, I and others in law enforcement, we need tools to deal with that type of conduct. A second thing the act does is encourage information sharing within the government on terrorism matters. So for example, the FBI, the CIA, and the State Department can now share information more freely on terrorism activity. A third thing, the act does, which has occasioned the most comment in the press, is it updates surveillance capacities for law enforcement to account for changes in technology. The act passed overwhelmingly in Congress. In the House, it passed 357 to 66. In the Senate, it passed 98 to 1. And I know our elected representatives, in passing that act overwhelmingly, did not pass an act which is going to violate our civil rights. Robert, let me follow up on that just a minute. Uh, without getting into any specifics, uh, your office uh, e either actually or is theoretically likely to be involved in carrying out some of the provisions of the Patriot Act? Correct. Okay. Well, John, what's wrong with, with the Patriot Act? Well, there are a number of different things wrong with it, Mick. I, I, uh, I, I'm concerned about any legislation that is enacted in response to something like September 11th. And the, there are problems because of the way that now your home can be searched and they don't even need to tell you they searched it. They can come in and take pictures, do things like that called a sneak and peek. They don't have the judicial review that they previously had where they had oversight by judges. Uh, who were independent and had to look at evidence the government had to bring forth. They can collect information now on citizens about what books you read, about where you go. They can look at your internet accounts. They have opportunities now to invade the privacy of ordinary citizens like they never did before. And I'm concerned, like um, uh, many have said, about uh, the detention of people who are aliens. They can detain them for as long as they want. They don't need to allow them to see lawyers. They can entitle people as uh, enemy combatants now and keep them away from lawyers. And there's a recent example of that. But of, of all the things uh, uh, from Congress and of course the political response to the horrors of 9-11 was understandable. And uh, I think that in times like this, um, bad law gets made and uh, but the, but the thing that concerns me the most about the Patriot Act is the attitude of the president and the Attorney General that you're either with us or against us that somehow to be against the actor to point out the the lost liberties as a result of the act is somehow unpatriotic um, I, I, I'm very concerned that 
the highest official, law enforcement official in the country, the Attorney General, said that uh, to those who would scare peace-loving people with phantoms of lost liberty, so the things like I'm saying now, my message is this, your tactics only aid terrorists, for they erode our national unity and diminish our resolve. They give ammunition to America's enemies, pause to American friends. The most important cornerstone of our American liberty is the right to give your opinion on anything. And the most important thing that all of us have, the thing that separates us from the, from the rest of the world, is our individual liberty. Well, Robert, uh let me back up a little bit. You mentioned one thing that uh, the act does that is, is different uh, in relation to wiretaps. Can you briefly uh, tell us uh, how those, uh, how the Patriot Act has changed what's permissible on wiretaps? The wiretap change, which has attracted so much attention, concerns roving wiretaps. Which and is what? Yeah, what's that? A roving wiretap applies only to foreign intelligence wiretaps. It does not apply in an ordinary criminal investigation. What it allows is for the FBI to follow someone who's using a cell phone, a disposable cell phone in particular. So if the person drops the cell phone, the wiretap continues when that person picks up a new cell phone. The critical problem is that the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act was written in 1978 when nobody knew cell phones were coming. Foreign intelligence wiretaps are authorized only by the Foreign Intelligence Court in Washington, D.C. So without a roving provision, the FBI agent, when the person throws away their cell phone, has to fly back to Washington, make an entirely new application for an entirely new cell phone. Congress is saying we need to react more rapidly than that in terrorism investigations and keep up with technology. We need to get to a break, but John, do you have a problem with the, the roving wiretap problem? Well, I sure do, because there's no real oversight over it. There has never been one of them turned down, and there have been like 7,000 applications for them, and all 7,000 of them have been approved. It's a secret judge in a secret court in the Justice Department. It's We're wrong in America. Let me jump in here and get us to a break. We're visiting with John Coyle and Robert McCampbell. We're discussing the Patriot Act. This is The Verdict. American Express Tax and Business Services. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. American Express Tax and Business Services. In Oklahoma City, the phone number is 405-843-5311. Bringing out the best in each student. That is the simple goal and tradition of Heritage Hall. The focus on the individual shapes the educational experience at Heritage Hall. Each student benefits from small classes, able, dedicated teachers, a solid academic curriculum, and exceptional co-curricular programs of athletics, arts, community service, and other activities, parental involvement, personalized counseling, and the development of responsibility, integrity, and love of learning. If you want education taught with pride, then you want Heritage Hall. St. Gregory's University has been changing the lives of people like me for 125 years. Affordable, private Catholic education, balanced with dedication to community and service, makes St. Gregory special. We're extremely proud of our students' outstanding academic achievements and our nationally ranked athletic teams. It's when you help a student build a future of balance, integrity, and service that you change a life forever. St. Gregory's, a community for life. long for the days of loyalty and innocence. Gather your kids around you and take them to the farm for a visit with Timmy and Lassie. We days right here.
Welcome back. Mick Cornett and Kit Myers on The Verdict. We're talking with U.S. District Attorney Robert McCampbell and noted defense attorney John Coyle. Kent, what's next? Well, uh, Robert, uh, well, no, let me go to John. Uh, we've been beating up on Robert here. Uh, uh, John, <coughs> Robert mentioned an ability to detain aliens, as did you. Uh, what problem is there with detaining aliens uh, as long as we need to to figure out what's going on? Well, I mean, it should be obvious to anybody who investigates that particular alien uh, as to what the problem is with them uh, if they're suspected of illegal activity. But just detaining them uh, essentially for months on end without allowing them any contact is just wrong. It's, it's not in keeping with the fundamental freedom uh, that we should all enjoy. They have detained, uh, for instance, right after 9-11, they detained a doctor uh, who was represented by a friend of mine, Jerry Goldstein in San Antonio. Um, for 10 days, they kept him incommunicado. They wouldn't for over 20 days let uh, Jerry Goldstein even see his client as a lawyer. Um, it's wrong to withhold uh, the right to counsel, some of the things that all Americans enjoy. And don't really think about that much until you need it. Um, and I'm very concerned about them being able to put immigrants in jail indefinitely. Uh, Robert? It's wrong. The case John cites predates the Patriot Act. In Section 412 of the Act, Congress actually has a very measured response. The ability to detain the alien lasts only seven days. At the end of the seven days, that person must either be charged with a crime or charged with an immigration offense. Either way, that person gets the right to a lawyer, they get a federal judge watching out for their rights, and they get due process of law under our Constitution. Even during that initial seven-day period, there's judicial review. And so it is a measured and appropriate response. Moreover, it's only for extreme terrorism cases. In fact, that provision has never been invoked, and there's not a single person that's been detained under that provision. Robert, what about the Internet? How does the Patriot Act affect what I or other Americans might do on the Internet? Again, the Patriot Act updates Internet surveillance capability. Uh, I could talk about lots of technical, technological updates. Let me give just one example. When Congress wrote the Cable Act in 1984, they did not anticipate that we'd be getting anything over the cable other than television programming. When people start getting Internet over the cable, the Electronic Communications Privacy Act and the Cable Act were actually in conflict with each other. Congress used the Patriot Act to resolve the conflict and say we're going to have a uniform set of procedures. If you're going to do internet surveillance, no matter how the internet comes into that person's home, you're going to have to go before a judge, you're going to have to make an application, you're going to have to get that judge's permission in advance before you do that type of surveillance. Uh, John, what do you think? Well, I believe the Internet Surveillance Act and the way that it's, the, and the way that it's set up now is going to ensnare so much information in any of the searches that it's going to be able to pry on any information that they really want. Because you think it's that broad? I think it's that broad. And what they did, because the two acts may have had some conflicts, they just did away with not only any of the conflicts, but almost all the restrictions. So now they have the opportunity to search uh, the email of America. And that, and that goes on to one of the bigger problems that we have in all of this, is that as technology expands, the opportunities for the government to take away our freedom, to take away our privacy, increases as technology increases. And that's why these safeguards are so important to be in place. Can I respond to the email sure. question? Sure. Section 210 of the Act did not remove any of the safeguards what it did with respect to email was all the email warrants were having to go through the Eastern District of Virginia and the Northern District of California because that's where the Internet service providers are. All the act says is a federal judge in Oklahoma can approve that warrant. You don't need to get a judge in Virginia or California. Robert, uh, let me direct this to you. Um, <clears throat> after World War II, or after Pearl Harbor, uh, the government interned Japanese Americans in uh, circumstances that have been looked upon historically as not being appropriate. 
some have suggested that the Patriot Act is another example of an inappropriate over-response to an admitted disaster. I mean, nobody's downplaying the significance of it. What's your uh, thought about that? Like any country, we have made mistakes in our past. I believe we've learned from those mistakes. I believe the Patriot Act is a far more measured, far more calibrated response than we've seen, for example, to Pearl Harbor. Significantly, Congress included all sorts of safeguards in the act. The judicial review provisions remain in place. Congress included a specific provision for plaintiff's lawsuits, for people to sue the government if they thought that the Patriot Act was violating their rights. And so, I believe it is a situation where we're providing an appropriate response to protect ourselves, but also to protect the rights of the people who are attacking us. Well, we're running out of the end. Why don't we give each of you a chance to kind of summarize your views on the Patriot Act? John, why don't, why don't you go first? Well, I'm concerned, uh, um, as, I, as I talked about earlier, Mick, that the Patriot Act is a response to the worst terrorist act that America's ever suffered. And it's times like these, like the internment of the Japanese during World War II, like um, the time that even Abraham Lincoln suspended habeas corpus at one point during the Civil War. These sort of reactions to terrible problems uh, that befall our country, anything that decreases our liberty in any way, um, harms all of us for a long time because I said if there's any real fixed star in the constellation of America it's the right to disagree on any subject we want it's the right to say to disagree with the president it's the right to disagree with the Attorney General who says that uh, if we disagree with him we're not patriotic um, I, uh, I don't like opportunities to monitor our email. I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong to be able to come in and search people's home and not tell them about it. I think it's wrong uh, to be able to collect information on what books we read, where we go, what movies we see. I want to give Robert a chance to, to respond and sum up your thoughts, Robert. I'd like to summarize by agreeing with John on the Big, Come on now. And the major <laughs> question facing us. It, I'm confident that as people look at the Patriot Act and look at what, what's actually in the Act, they will agree with me that it is not a, an infringement on our liberties. The bigger question John raises is the more important question. In the course of fighting this enemy, we're in a unique position. This is not like investigating Martha Stewart, where everybody plays by the rules. But in the course of fighting that enemy, we've got to keep our civil liberties foremost in our minds and we've got to be ever vigilant to guard the rights and the values which have made this country great. Robert McCampbell, John Quill, thanks for coming on. Thank thanks. you for having me. Appreciate Kent it. and I'll be right back.
You did great on that test, son. I'm real proud of you. Encourage them. Get them to graduate. Don't drop out on your kids. We're back to wrap up another edition of The Verdict. I know we like to think all our shows are thought-provoking, but this one probably more so than most. Yeah, indeed, and of course, any show that has Robert McCampbell and John Coyle uh, <laughs> together will be thought-provoking, but uh, the fact that it's discussing the Patriot Act, something that uh, is in the news quite a bit and, and rather frequently uh, in the past uh, few uh, months, uh, adds to the, to the zest of the show. Uh, the, uh, the Patriot Act, uh, is an interesting act in the sense that it is under attack, if you'll pardon these uh, characterizations, from the uh, left and from the right. Uh, there isn't, this isn't just a liberal conservative fight here, it's getting attacked from both sides. And what adds uh, interest to it is that it passed by such an overwhelming majority uh, at the time it was enacted, of course, a direct response to the 9-11 tragedy. Uh, but John Coyle and uh, Robert McCampbell bring interesting, thoughtful, intelligent uh, perspectives to that subject, but also in this district in which we live and in which most of our viewers or many of our viewers reside, uh, these rights and remedies are being handled by people like these two uh, that, uh, that take good care of uh, both sides of the argument. Uh, these, these rights are being protected well by the, uh, the people that were here with us today. Well, next week, we'll get back into our series on Oklahoma's impact players. We'll visit with Tom Love, the CEO of Love's Country Stores and Travel Stops. In the meantime, check out our website, theverdict.tv. Tell us what you think of this show or suggest a topic for a future show. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time on The Verdict. You've been watching The Verdict with Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. The Verdict is sponsored in part by the Able Law Firm.